Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and welcome to episode 2 of Two Lizards, One Cup. Again, I am joined by Lord Rexasaur. Hello. And welcome. So, Rexasaur, would you like to start this podcast? Yeah, today guys, we're going to be talking about this year in gaming. 2014 is a long last gone, or soon to go. And we're going to be talking about the best games, the worst games, the gaming events of this year that have been so different to the previous years and so much bigger. And also we're going to finish off on a little bit of Gamergate. However, firstly, uh, next week's will be uh, in the new year for you. We'll be recording it on the last few days of the year, but you guys will be hearing it uh, nearer to the new year. And uh, we'll be talking about modding, whether it's a help or a hindrance to the gaming community. So please put your comment down below about what you think, if modding is a good thing or a bad thing, and what kinds of mods you use or you play, and what kinds of games you like to play with mods. Yeah, good stuff. And also, I should say that this episode will probably be up on the 27th of December. So if you listen to us right now, Merry Christmas. I hope you had a great Christmas. Don't eat yeah. too much cake. <laughs> <laughs> and get to get ready for the New Year's party. Yeah. So 2014, a year in gaming. That's the first and the main topic that we're going to talk about in this week's discussion. So what's been your favourite game this year? Favourite game of this year? Now, I think the, the game I've played the most and most consistently this year has been uh, Hearthstone, yeah. which uh, went into beta at the beginning of the year and was fully released, I think, in either March or April. Yeah. Um, and I've been playing it... Well, not, I say consistently, I've been playing it all, at least three, four times a week, uh, but not for long periods of time. I mean, it's a card game where you do your, you know, it's a free-to-play card game, you do your dailies and stuff like that. Um, but that has to be one of my most consistently played games of this year, and one that I've enjoyed a lot, uh, especially with the two expansions that have come out, the first one being uh, Naxxramas, which was an adventure mode, and the last one, which was released uh, two weeks ago now, was uh, Goblins and Gnomes, which is a full card expansion to the wow. game, which is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> really enjoying I, it. I never played Hearthstone. Um, I've seen lots of people post videos on YouTube about it. Yeah. I think, I think uh, Kasam187, who commented on last yeah. week's video, I think he posted a couple on it. Um, yeah. It might be something I might check out in, in the near future. Yeah, it's, um, it's a really nice card game. It's really simple to, to understand uh, the basics. There are so many good YouTubers out there who uh, who help uh, noobs like me, I me. understand <laughs> how the, the game works. One of these being Trump. Uh, he is so, so good to, to watch if you're learning the game because he goes through it very nice, very structured order and tells you what you need to do in certain situations and stuff and it's really nice and um, plus he's quite an awesome he's funny so that's always helpful um but the game is really really nice and you know you don't even have to play that much you play what three four games a day have a have a little bit of fun and then go off do something else and then come back the next day with your new daily quest and whatever oh. and it's really really nice awesome yeah i think i'll probably check that game out um as for myself probably Probably Far Cry 4. That's a game which probably took me by surprise this year. I never played Far Cry 3. There was a lot of buzz about Far Cry 4. And I gave in. I thought, well, I'm going to try this game out. I bought it. And the game completely blew me away. Just so random. You know, you can literally be on a mission and all of a sudden a tiger will jump out of nowhere. And completely, <laughs> completely rip your throat out. And then on another mission, you'll be chasing a convoy on the, a convoy on the back of a scooter or something. And, you know, a, a bloody eagle will swoop down and bite you you know it's just completely you know the main missions are random which is something i like about the game no mission feels the same and you can do so much within the game the villain itself uh pagan min he reminded me of the joker he was completely yeah. cynical in the batshit crazy way which i like with villains and yeah i think far cry 4 for me has been one of the most enjoyable games of the year yeah yeah i i haven't i haven't played far cry 4 so i can't really but then again, you've never played Hearthstone. So no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what yeah else? No. It does seem a lot of people have been enjoying that game. But the thing is, a lot of people have been saying it's a it's Far Cry Three. Yeah. But with a bit more addition. But then again, you've never played Far Cry. 3 No, I think that's out. yeah. I think that's probably skewered my point of view because if I'd played Far Cry Three when that came out a couple of years ago, it maybe my my point of view would be oh, it's just added a few things. But because yeah. I haven't played it, you know, my opinion is is what it is. I think it's a great game, and yeah. out of all the games I've played this year. It's, it's definitely in my top five. Yeah. Good. Um, another game that I've really enjoyed this year, 
Um, I haven't actually played a whole lot of, which is really a shame, but I think it's mostly because my laptop takes forever to load it, and it's Crusader Kings 2. Oh, yeah. It didn't come out, but it had so much awesome uh, DLC expansions come out. Um, we had uh, Charlemagne come out, which extended the timeline even more, which did a whole redux of the whole situation and how everything works, and it was bloody beautiful. Um, and now, very recently, about, I don't know, a week ago, less than that, Way of Life came out, which completely redesigned the interaction between um, your character, the character that you play as, and the NPCs, the ones that own their own counties and the other people. You completely changed that. Um, and the user interfaces changed as well. And that game, when I get, next year, I'm going to be playing that game constantly with a laptop that won't bloody take 20 minutes to load the game. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Crusader Kings 2 is still very dear to my heart, and oh my god, I am so looking forward to what's coming next year. Yeah, one of the things I love with Crusader Kings 2 is you can start a campaign, but you can go back to it months and months down the line and still enjoy it. Yeah. It's got, it's got a lot of... Uh, oh, replayability. Replayability, that's the word I was looking for. I was going to say yeah. longevity, but that's something completely different. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, so, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's a game... No matter how many playthroughs I do, it's always different. Yeah. Always different, no matter how many... Even if I play the same character, different things will happen. I had a character... I really wanted to um, do this... Th there's an achievement uh, as... Uh, one of them is Norway, when you play in 1066, where you have to um, become King of England. Uh, oh, yeah. As part of uh, Harold Hadrada and all that. And the first time I did it, I got killed in battle. The second time, my daughter... I got assassinated, and then I had to play as the Queen... And there, uh, who was, at that point was a five-year-old girl, and then she got assassinated. And the <laughs> final time, I just I got Scotland, and then I went into civil war and just couldn't get back from it. So, oh my god, just every time is completely different. It's great. Seems like a very eventful campaign. <laughs> oh my god, I'd never get it. I'll eventually manage. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so it's time for me to pick another one which I've enjoyed this year. Um, off the top of my head, it's, technically it's a game which didn't come out this year it came out the year previous or at least the first episode of it did and that is the wolf among us yes and yeah i think it was 2013 it was first release and it was finished up i think it was this summer i think it yeah. was yeah 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 it was yeah yeah and it's that's a fantastic game because i like games where it gives you an option of how you like to play i know telltale games have had a lot of stick in the past because no matter what the choices you choose the story tends to be relatively yeah. relatively similar it's, to what you it's pick. linear no yeah it, you know they they have a they have a plot line which goes from a point A to point B, but yeah. But what I love with Bigby Wolf, you can either play the most straight up good cop that you could possibly be, or you can play it the way that I played and just be a total arsehole to everyone. <laughs> and that's what I did. I ripped off people's arms. Yeah. I called people a bastard. I punched people for the sake of it. I stole money. I did everything you could possibly do. Even even when I confronted the main villain at the end of the game, I lit up a cigarette because I just didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my god, that game. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, and it's actually a game which I played with my girlfriend, and she doesn't play video games with me often, and she actually really enjoyed it as well. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Telltale games are good like that. They, I think Telltale games are one of those gaming series which really blurs the line between male and female gamers because it's really a game that anyone can enjoy who likes stories really yeah, yeah it's like picking up a good movie in the store you just pick yeah, it up yeah exactly you watch it's it an one interactive night interactive movie yeah so yeah, yeah Telltale Games The Wolf Among Us that's definitely up there yeah that's uh, it's a good choice thank you uh, <laughs> <laughs> what else uh, best game of the year oh I've played I've played quite a few games I mean I've been getting to the Telltale Games at the moment I've bought like a load of them yeah. Um, so I've been playing quite a lot. What's a game I've been playing? I played at the beginning of the year. I can't remember what I played, but I remember playing it a ton. Oh, that's it. Uh, Men of War, the Salt Squad. Oh, two. I haven't played Men of War. I've been meaning to buy it. Yeah, I have. Is it good? I I got into it. I didn't get. To, I got into it uh, quite recently, um, actually, because we bought it whilst. Uh, because that's it. We, I bought it with my uh, friend Crap Hunter, who we do uh, co-op videos with, because we wanted to do a co-op Rome two, but that went down the drain. So we decided to change <laughs> to yeah. Men of War Assault Squad two, which we never got to because I can't record that either. Um, oh, but, damn. <laughs> um, but the game itself, like, if I'm not recording, I can actually play the game. And oh my god, it is such a sensational game. It's like Company of Heroes, but ten times more brutal, and wow. just 
so stressful at so many times. You never have a point where you can relax. Your men are always under constant fire. The fact that you can um, control individual units in third person, if you so choose, like you can control a tank that you send off in RTS mode, and then just go, oh, I'll have that tank and just shoot this other tank uh, that I, you know, so that I can aim and actually choose where he shoots rather than like shoots the tracks like a total idiot. Which it's such an amazing game. It really puts you at the forefront of the of the fighting. You can basically change from being the person commanding a whole like platoon to the person commanding one individual man and it's it's such a great game and it's so brutal you get absolutely destroyed by the enemy if you let them like push back on you and counterattack it's so good wow i'm, I'm thinking i'm gonna have to get that one on steam some, at some point oh yeah definitely when i get my new laptop i'm gonna be making a, at least one video just to introduce everyone to it because it's an amazing game and it's so fun like there's a there's a um a map editor on it yeah so you can like put tanks down and then just like take the tank with the biggest gun control it shoot the other tanks and just watch them go flying <laughs> and it's just beautiful it's brilliant have you played Dragon Age Inquisition this year? I have not, no. Oh, damn. Oh, that's it. Sorry, I'll, I'll do it after. I'll do it after. I've, uh, I've remembered the game of my... The game of the year for me. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I, I must pick another choice in that case, because we can't really talk about Dragon Age... Oh, I suppose we could, couldn't we, if I've played it? Well, you could. Yeah. Um, I haven't played much of it. That's the only thing. I've only played... Five... Oh, it's, that kind of, it's that kind of game where you have to play a lot of it. Before yeah. You get... Yeah, I've played five, six hours of it, I think, in total been very good so far the dialogue's great the story's intriguing the gameplay takes a little while to get used to because i'm not really the sort of person that has played many uh, oh, uh, dragon yeah. age games you know yeah, i team team based rpgs yeah that's not really my my style so i'm new to the kind of franchise as well yeah. but what i can say so far it's been very enjoyable i have seen some big youtube channels say that it's game of the year or it's one of their game of the years and i'm not going to stand against them because i think it you know if once i complete this game i'll be able to say for sure if it is up complete. there but... dragon age oh, can't complete dragon age <laughs> never stop <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah dragon age is up there for me this year i think so yeah. far all right i think my game of the year if i had to pick one game that stood out has to be shadow of mordor oh here we go because i played it I, it has its flaws and it has its repetitive but the thing is i played it with my um housemate he yeah. bought it and then we played it together so we took it in turns over who did missions and stuff like that so it was always new to all of us and we both got ourselves into this sort of ideas of certain orcs and stuff and trying to yeah. do, do our plans together and we had a um an enemy orc commander who kept killing us who had a really <laughs> ugly face and we just called him muck cunty face <laughs> and yeah. from that point on in every single one of the games we play there's always an enemy called muck cunty face <laughs> and it's become tradition now wow. in a very short time and i think shadow of mordor is one of those games that took everyone by surprise because no one was expecting a good um lord of the rings game yeah now everyone thought it was going to be terrible like we had from that before shadow of mordor came out a lot of the games that come out have been really terrible or have been remakes that no one really liked yeah i know what you mean and yeah. shadow of mordor was like the 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 points where everything went back up uh to all the good games coming out things like dragon age inquisition came out and uh like so much good stuff came out and yeah i think shadow of mordor was such an amazing game to play the fact that you could take over animals and ride them and bash people with trolls yeah, caragogs yeah yeah <laughs> oh, it was a good game it was a really 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 good game yeah i i enjoyed it um i wouldn't say it was game of the year for, for me personally i think i think i enjoyed it more than i definitely enjoyed it more than uh, my housemate because i was already into the lore yeah. So I knew a lot of the background to all the creatures and shit and things that were happening uh, in in the process, like because that happens between um, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, and I I sort of already knew what was going on from reading into the lore and all that beforehand. So I think I was more into it than the person who just seen Lord of the Rings and just seen the Hobbit. All oh, right, right, yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. Like I said, it wouldn't be game of the year for me. I thought Talion as a character was great. He was tragic, but at the same time, he was a great hero character to try and get behind uh, in his quest. And I thought it fitted in nicely into the, you know, the bridge and the gap basically between the yeah. movies and the, the law. But it's just from a gameplay gameplay uh, point of view, that's what kind of did it for me. Nemesis system was great, but I just found it too 
too um, repetitive. Oh, and I found I found the the kind of I suppose it's borrowed something from Assassin's Creed. The whole kind of yeah, ta- tower thing. Yeah, from Assassin's Creed. And yeah. And that. Yeah, that was something which really did my head in. Because it does my head in Assassin's Creed as well. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the problem as might, well. I enjoyed yeah. the Assassin's Creed games yeah. recently, starting one. Yeah. So. yeah, so I'm not knocking the game. It's just yeah. that, it's just yeah. that no, kind I of... Think, I think it depends on the play. I mean, everything's opinion-based in the end. Yeah, so. yeah that's it. No, nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's all, <laughs> no, exactly. it's no, all I, opinions. I really enjoyed it. And I think a lot of the thing, like the reason me and my friend really enjoyed it was the spectacle whenever you pulled off an execution attack yeah. and just it went into slow motion as you slice someone's head open and ah, oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's Shadow of Mordor. I think. So, yeah. well, I think this year what's happened is we had shit games at the start of the year, but then as the year has gone on, we've had some good games come out like Shadow of Mordor, like you said, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, Far Cry Four, just to name a few. Because I think at the start of the year we had games like had Titanfall t- and Thief, didn't we? Yeah, and Thief. they were shit. Thief. Forgot Thief came out this year. Yeah, a terrible game. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't played it, but I have watched enough of it to know it's shit. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, and that that was a game that was promised so much, wasn't it? It was hyped up like hell. It was it was, it was on trailers. You had uh, early access people, you know, reviewers and stuff saying, "Oh, it's going to be a good game." Oh, and then. It was released. It was a buggy mess. It was fucking shit, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which has been the theme of the year, really. Buggy mess, total shit. Buggy mess, buggy mess, early access. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you think of early access? I, uh, I'm mixed on it. It depends. I think there are some games that should have early access, and that early access is beneficial to. Yeah. I think there are some games where it's complete stupid i think that games on early access should be already at a discounted price yeah than, because some games on early access are already like 40 dollars or whatever and you're like what i'm not going to pay full price for a game that's not finished even though i get it finished at the end i'm basically being a beta tester for you or an alpha tester in most cases you know helping you and and telling you the things that are wrong as well as giving you ideas to put into the game to make it better and I have to pay to be that person. I think that I think that's the stupid. I think we should be given the game to to beta test it and maybe or you know at least at a very discounted price uh, to do that. But I do think it's a it's a very nice if it's done right. It's an incredible yeah. thing for a developer to have who doesn't quite know what's going on. Things like Prison Architect is that works for that game because that game is very small developing company. Uh, they they all the people that have helped them along. Uh, have managed to tell them the bugs and and sort it all out as well, give them a a ton of ideas that they've put into the game. And um, also by using the... um, uh, by creating their own prisons and showing the developers what they can do with the engine, you know, that that, that they might not have realised. I think that's an amazing development. However, there are some games that take the piss with it. There are some games that absolutely fucking take the piss (laughs) with early access, and they should be shot. Yeah. Because... Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's a game uh, coming out on January the 15th. It's called H1Z1. Have you yeah. heard of it? Yeah, I have. It's going to be early access. It's not going to be a finished product when it's released. And it's going to be, I think it's £15 on Steam. Yeah. yeah. But eventually they've said that they're going to have it as a free-to-play game. Yeah. So basically you have to pay to play the game, buy the game initially. And then once the game's finished a couple of years down the line, you'll be able to play it for free. I think the thing is about Hades. I think that game is a bit of a um, of a very strange one because it's going to be Sony Online Entertainment. That that's yeah. the publisher. So that already is a very very big company back in it. Um, and I think that they're probably even though they are paying for the game now, I think they're probably going to get some kind of reward through it, like some kind of premium account for a year or whatever. Yeah. Because I I doubt highly, especially something as big as Sony Online Entertainment, will allow people to just like yeah pay to have the game now and there we go. <laughs> um, but I I do think that they do need to get the game out there, um, because the ideas that they have are incredible. They are like like having a complete crafting system in game where you can build your own bases in an online game as big as planet side 2 yeah what <laughs> it's yeah. like pretty really strange but yeah no i don't know i personally i i'm not going to want to play the game because i don't like zombie games generally no. i think that they uh, you know they're they're stale now i think uh, do, they, um, do they scare you zombies no uh, <laughs> oh not really no <laughs> I think, 
I just, you know, I, I think they're still, I think they're overused. I don't mind a good zombie game. I like The Walking Dead. Yeah, I like I mean, uh, yeah. things like, um, what was it called? Uh, Resident Evil. Yeah, well, Resident Evil is the worst. I don't like them at all. Oh. <laughs> um, I played Resident <laughs> Evil 4 and I was just like, this game is terrible. <laughs> I think what's happened with zombies and zombie games, I think we've had a kind of resurgence in I think that, franchises yeah, and... and... I think that was the issue of 2013, was like the zombie year. Yeah, I think once you've played enough of them and once you've watched enough of these type of shows, you kind of become immune to them, and yeah. they don't really scare you anymore. No, they don't. No. Yeah, they lose the impact. Yeah. That's why Outlast, um, when that came out, like zombies have been around for a while, people were like, oh, it's not actually going to be that scary. But because it doesn't actually use zombies as such, it uses like mad men in asylums i think that game works so well as, yeah. a, as a scary game and again that game goes around to scare you rather than like the other ones which are just like yeah try and survive survival yeah. horror oh, great. Survival. <laughs> yeah um yeah I th- there's a zombie game i've recently started playing uh daisy yeah I, I saw your videos see daisy daisy is one of those rare games where because it's literally a va- it's because survival horror when you think about it in like terms of what other games have tried to bring you it's like yeah have a little like, a lot of zombies and not a lot of surviving and it's like daisy is mostly you're scared not not only of the zombies but also the other players trying yeah. to kill you for your gear and it's just like god damn it i got killed more by players than banging zombies yeah i think daisy works so well because it's so random as well i mean in the first time i played it I thought this guy was going to kill me. I literally spawned in. He had an axe. I had nothing. I just had the clothes on my back. I literally legged it down uh, this railway line all the way to the end. The guy was still following me. I thought, oh, shit, he's going to kill me. Eventually, he he catches up with me. He's like, oh, I'll help you. I was like, oh, okay. So we went off for about 10 minutes. He's like, showed me all the tutorials. Like, oh, press this button to open the menu. Do this to look around. Do this to go to third person. I thought, oh, this guy's really, really nice. I can't believe this. Two minutes later, he leaves me get killed by a zombie. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, oh, you know, it's a pretty what good game, that? round. Nice it is a good, it is a good game. I played some of the um, or I, I I played the modded version on Armor Two. Yeah. Um, and it was it was a lot of fun. It's much funner when you have a group of people to play with, though. Yeah. Yeah, which is a, which is a shame. Yeah, it's, it's a, yeah. It's so a bit... um, yeah. So let's let's move on a little bit and talk about the worst games of the year for you. Oh shit! Here we and go. let's not talk about Assassin's Creed Unity because we all know how shit that is. Oh, I had a whole rant. <laughs> no, we will. We'll leave that for last. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Watch Dogs. Watch. Oh god, yes. Watch Dogs. <laughs> Shall we to start? Yeah, sure. Okay. Watch Dogs is shit. I <laughs> I had it a few weeks after launch. I didn't have it initially on the launch, and basically everything that was in the E3 trailer back. I think it was two years previous. I think it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, might have been two. Might have been one. I think. I think I it'd know. be. I thought. I thought, I thought it came, like with E3 the year before. E3 2013. Yeah. I think that's when the hype started. Yeah, and basically, on the console version, everything is downgraded, which isn't surprising. But the fact that they showed it at E3 and was like, "Yep, this is what the console's going to look like," and then. Of course, two years later, it looked nothing like it. I literally had pop it on the screen. You could literally drive in a car at full speed and you'll get buildings still rendering. Um, so from a from an aesthetics kind of point of view, it didn't look that nice. Um, Aiden Pierce as a main character, he's fucking boring. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. he's like, he's like, um, they killed my niece. I must find out who killed my niece. The voice yeah. acting was boring as well. There was no life yeah. in him. You know, he was just yeah. oh my god. I could go on all day. <laughs> yeah. I uh, my I had a friend show me the game. Actually, he was like, oh yeah, I have Watch Dogs. I'll let you you know play play around with it for a while, and I did. And it's it is. It's absolutely terrible. Yeah. It's it's yeah. It's like what the hell are you even thinking? You're giving us this idea of like yeah, massive hacking. It's like no. It's more like Quick Time Event Simulator. Uh, yeah. in GTA 5 in, in GTA 3 because it's that bad oh, I, know. I know it's so bad it's just terrible yeah I don't know how you can fail at such a thing I, don't know. I thought it was I thought the idea the concept was amazing it's just the way that they bought it to us was absolutely terrible yeah and to be fair I think this year has been an absolute shite for Ubisoft <laughs> I think it's been their worst year that they've done in a very long time it has been I mean the only good game 
which is what we mentioned earlier, was Far Cry 4. That was a Ubisoft yeah, game. That's true. And that was pretty good. It wasn't buggy. It was very fun to play. Yeah. But then everything else has just been total garbage. Yeah, no, it's it's a shame, really. Because you think uh, Ubisoft is seen as not, you know, it's not one of the bad ones. It's one of the ones that usually regularly give us good games. And then they've just been going downhill for the past few years. Yeah. With the invention of you play. <laughs> oh no! Don't tell me about you play. Oh, right. That's something else I want to talk about. Right. Assassin's Creed Unity. I'm not going to go into it full depth, but I pre-ordered it. Okay. Yeah. On my, off Amazon, and I had a pre-order discount code, and it gave you access to a lot of bullshit, basically. Yeah. But I couldn't access my bullshit because you play wouldn't let me. You play. Sort your fucking shit out. I want my bullshit. <laughs> I want my bullshit. It's not fair. What's yeah. the point in pre-ordering having pre-order bonuses if you can't access them? You can't even access them, yeah. No. Yeah, no, Unity, mm, let's leave it a bit. I want to talk to you about Call of Duty. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Number no. 94. <laughs> All the 15-year-olds are going to cry. Help me. Oh, dear. Right, I haven't played <laughs> it, so... Advanced, was it Advanced Warfare now? Yeah, is it, is it, uh, yeah Advanced, that's right, yeah. So Call of Spacey, because that's the only good point. <laughs> uh, was Kevin Spacey? Yeah. What? <laughs> Just stop it! Just Call of Duty, stop. Okay, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> You've done modern warfare. You've done advanced warfare. Now, can we just go back to having a Call of Duty every two or three years that are actually good and historically done? God damn it! <laughs> I know. I know. It's. It's um. They're gonna run out of ideas eventually. I mean, surely this can't go oh, on. The thing is, they're not because. They they literally copy and pasting ideas and just advancing or whatever, putting it in a different timeline. So it's got generic hero, which are usually American, generic bad guy, which is usually Russia or communist, with a mustache or a beard. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, blow shit up at the beginning, middle, end, and yeah. try and make it spacey, as in not Kevin Spacey, but <laughs> you know, start in space. I think, isn't that what happened in Ghost? They started in space. Yeah, I saw the then, trailer for it, yeah. Actually, it is getting spacey. In Ghost, it was in space, and now it's Kevin Spacey. What's next? <laughs> Spaceballs! <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> All there on these space oh, I, I can I can see it now. Call of Duty, Star Wars edition. Oh, my God. <laughs> see, that wouldn't even be a bad game. Well, that's basically Battlefront, though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Battlefront's coming out soon. Oh. Why is it soon? Is it next year or the year? I think it's 2016. Is it? I don't even know. Do you know, I think it could be the beginning of 2016. I think yeah, all I they're think going so to do is release the film and then have that a few months yeah. later. Oh, yeah, that might be. Yeah. Build up all the hype. Yeah, that would be so good. Yeah. Oh, looking forward to that. Hopefully oh, it's not I'm shoot, me. But... I'm me. I did notice you uploaded a Battlefront video on your channel the other day. I did. I did Battlefront 2. Oh. That's so good. I'm looking forward to the remake. Really am. I think as long as <laughs> as long as long DICE don't put a uh, another Battlefield up. Yeah. Oh. It's high. <laughs> It yeah. should be fine. Yeah. Battlefield 4. Let's talk about another shit game of the year. Battlefield 4. Did that come out last year? I can't remember. 2013. That was that was out around about the same time as Rome 2, I think. I know, during buggy, buggy end of the year. Buggy 20... end of the year 2013. The thing is, but we can still talk about worst games of the year Battlefield 4, because they're still buggy as fuck. Yeah. It's been over a year. Is it, wasn't it Battlefield 4? Wasn't it? I think they said we're not going to release any more additional content. We're going to work on the game first and make sure the game's fixed. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was, it was Battlefield 4. I think so, yeah, but it's still not fixed, apparently. No, <laughs> I heard the same, yeah. Yeah, which is... Yeah, and they, was it Hardlines coming out or something? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Corpse and robbers with advanced guns. What? <laughs> so Battlefield 4.2. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A working version, we promise. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I... um. I hate multi-year franchise games. They're just killing the gaming industry at they the are. moment. They are. I mean... They really are. Yeah. <laughs> FIFA? Did you play FIFA this year? FIFA 15? I played a bit of it. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. I thought it was... Uh, I thought it, well, from what I heard from my housemate who plays a lot of it, uh, it's a slight improvement on 14, but... You know, whatever. Yeah. For it's me, a, it's, it's like, the same thing, isn't it? Though. Yeah, it's a football game. Yeah. <laughs> the only difference I noticed was there's there's 20 official Premier League stadiums. Oh man! Instead of 19, <coughs> probably. Yeah, I know. It's, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> How can they even put that many stadiums in a game? Oh my god! Mind blown. <laughs> yeah, that's literally the only thing, and that's all they advertise in the trailer as well. It's like, oh, we got the official licenses, we got this, we got that. Fuck oh, you, everyone else that's making a yeah. football game. Yeah. 
But the gameplay is the same. Online yeah, is well, shit. I, you know, there's only so much you can put. But I don't know what my my housemate was saying that the game from 13 to 14 was a massive change. Yeah. Um, but from 14 to 15 was like, you know, nothing. Was the same as 12 to 13. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, it's it's like it's one of those games that changes in leaps sometimes and in like tiptoes in next. It's really you know it's not consistent. Yeah. Like Call of Duty, except that's like going downstairs all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think some games they benefit when they've got a really good competitor. Yeah. With, with yes. With I FIFA, because I I've been playing football games for a very long time since the PlayStation yeah. Two days. Yeah. I used to play Pro Evolution Soccer all the time. Yeah. I used to love it. It was ten times better than FIFA, and it always was. When it came to the next gen, which was the previous gen, which was Xbox 360 and PS3, FIFA kind of took over. It yeah, got it better. Did. It added lots of new things. Whereas Pro Evolution Soccer kind of lost its lost its way. The faces didn't quite look as good. They didn't really have any emotion on them. They, they didn't. They lost lots and lots of licenses. They lost the German league. So they, you can't even have German teams in Pro Evolution Soccer anymore. Oh I know. And then. It, this year, last year, sorry, 2013, when FIFA 14 and Pro Evolution Soccer 14 came out, Pro Evolution Soccer 14 was the worst football game ever. It completely just gave up on everything. They had four songs on the disc, <laughs> soundtrack, that was it. So you listened to the same shit all the time. And one of them was, I think it was an opera singer. What's that fat guy that died? The Italian dude. Oh, Pavarotti. Pavarotti, yeah. He had a, That's he was... a bit mean. <laughs> the fat guy who died. I yeah, couldn't remember Pavarotti. his name, but... Yeah, he was... he's fat. <laughs> he sings opera, right? Yeah. But I didn't want to sing, and, you know... Anyway, um, yeah, the fat dude, Pavarotti. <laughs> he's one you know, of the... the guy who sings... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I know him. <laughs> he's one of the guys that... He's one of the songs. He's... Yeah. yeah on, oh, the... God. on his football game. Yeah, exactly. Nice way to get down with the kids. They, they cocked up so much. They had four songs on it. Graphics was shit. And they actually came out and said afterwards, we're hoping that the, when we jump to next gen on Xbox One and PS4, we will make a big improvement. It's like, oh, you're you saying that literally a couple of days after the game's released. Yeah. You just don't do that. So, yeah, since no. then... I I've... feel like a lot of franchises and a lot of game developers have given up. I feel that. I feel like it's like, yeah, we don't actually care. Like, so many games have gone to mobile now. Yeah. We're looking to tycoons on mobile. Can you imagine that? Yeah. What it's ridiculous. Th- what do you think of Rise of the Tomb Raider being an Xbox One exclusive? I haven't I I haven't played it, so I don't know. Oh. Um I don't know anything about the game. I don't know if it's any good or anything. The fact that it's an Xbox One inclu- is it a timed exclusive? Yeah. I'm assuming it yeah, is. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna be something like six months. Oh my god. I if it was a timed exclusive for a month, maybe. That'd be fine. But six months is ridiculous. I think that's stupid. I think Tomb Raider has always been a multi-platform game, and why the fuck would you change it? Especially with the success of, it's like it's like Square Enix have just like taken the money and legged yeah, it. Yeah, that's basically what's happened. Because I played the Tomb Raider game from 2013. Yeah, that game was amazing. It was. It was fantastic. Lara Croft, you know, they did a fantastic job graphically, but also with the story and with the voice acting. I thought they hit the nail on the head, and they set up a perfect kind of reboot of the franchise. Yeah. And now, like this came came out a few months ago, the whole kind of exclusivity of of this uh, title, and ah, uh, it just bugs me because I'm a PS4 person. I've always, yeah. you know, I'm not going to go into the whole console war bullshit because it's bullshit at the end of the day. If you want an Xbox One, great. If you want a PS4, great. At the end of the day, it's whatever you want to play. <laughs> at the end of the day, PC Master Race. Okay? PC <laughs> Master Race. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, just just that was a joke, guys. Listen, it was yeah, a joke. just just torrent the bullshit. Just oh. torrent it all on PC. Get it all free. <laughs> exactly. No, but um, <laughs> in the end, it always comes out on PC. I mean, look at uh, Rise, Son of Rome. That's on PC. Exactly. It, it, that came out on Xbox when people were quite critical of it, and then less than a year later, was it? Or about a year yeah. later, Microsoft year, like, yeah. oh yeah, it's gonna be on Steam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually played that game. Don't. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Yeah. It's so it's historically inaccurate as fuck. The gameplay is repetitive as fuck. It's yeah. a quick time simulator. Yeah, because I, I did. It's, literally, it, it's like it's Watch Dogs, but even worse. Watch even worse than Watch Dogs. Oh yeah. my god, that's going some way, guys. <laughs> um, I did watch a couple of videos of it on YouTube when it first it's, came out. The spectacle is amazing, yeah. but after five minutes, it's fine. Yeah, it's I, like, uh, okay. I did find it quite weird seeing Boudicca ride an elephant. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, the historical accuracy of that game is pretty poor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be avoiding that one for sure. Yeah. But yeah. On. So, um, other worst games of this year. What? What? I don't know. There's been quite a few flops. But, you know, it's kind of. I can't remember any off the top of my head because I just choose to forget. Yeah, and I think as well, like, we play different games, don't we? So yeah, exactly. We're trying so. to remember what we've played this year and what we didn't enjoy. Um, yeah, I think a big flop. Was I mean, I mean, the thing is, there haven't just been games like new games coming out that have flopped. It's old games that have been updated and have flopped because of it. Oh, that's because something of, I want to talk to you about actually. Because um, like I know you don't play it at all. I have quite a few people. Well, my channel uh, is consistently. Well, I say consistently. A consistently. A World of Tanks. Uh, I play a lot of World of Tanks. I have my own clan. I'm commanding my own clan, and we do a lot of clan-based world of tanking and the whole because uh, this year we went into the 9.0 and we're now at 9.5 9.5 came out today and the whole of that year this year in world of tanks has been a buggy update after buggy update after well we fixed most of the issues oh shit we've crashed on the next update <laughs> bloody like yeah. absolute cock oh like they promised us at the beginning of the year uh, new physics engine, uh, HD models for everything, uh, better matchmaking, better this, better that. They basically gave us one of all of those and then fuck all the rest. <laughs> and it's just been a really bad year for them. And just The game, like, I literally gave up on the game in the 9.4. I gave up for a whole month, gave up on the game. And I've never done that with a game before. And it's just... It's shocking. I am shocked. It just reminded me of what we said in last week's podcast when I said I, I took some time off playing Rome 2. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Yeah, there's been so many buggy games this year. I mean, I wish developers would just pull their finger out their arsehole and just work properly because... I think, no, I, I, I admit some games will have bugs. I mean, you can't avoid oh, yeah. it. Yeah, but I think the repertoire should go back to just going, right, we'd like some beta testers. Here, they have a beta key. We're giving them out, you know, first come, first serve basis. Whoever comes first gets a beta key. Play it for a week. Tell us all the bugs. And we'll keep doing that until most of the bugs have been taken off. Yeah. You know, for free. For exactly. one week. Yeah. Also, Elder Scrolls Online did it. Uh, I haven't played Elder, Elder Scrolls, Scrolls Online. Elder Scrolls Online was shit. Yeah. But it did it. <laughs> it did it. You know, they, that was. I thought that that was an amazing thing for a developer to do. It's too bad the game was crap, but at least they went out there and went, "Here you go, have some free beta keys for everyone." Yeah. What's like? Why should we have to pay for early access to get our beta keys? You I know? don't know. It's just if we're beta testers in the past, we're fucking paid. <laughs> just give them for free. We're fine with that. Yeah. Why the fuck are you? <laughs> it's terrible. It's annoying. It's just money making, isn't it? I mean... It is. It's absolutely horrendous. The gaming industry is going so far into the shithole these days. There is some really good stuff coming out, but so much shit as well. Yeah. Um, just trying to think. I mean, we've gone through quite a lot of games at the moment. We've yeah. mentioned... I think an honourable mention, well, not on the worst games, uh, but I don't think not one of the best games either, but one of the Im most improved games of the year was uh, was Rome 2. With the Emperor yeah. Edition coming out, yeah, I think that's... definitely that at that point when Emperor Edition came out, that was when the game was like, yeah, this is it. This is the the game is now fixed and Yay. you can play it and it's lovely. Giving you a free campaign with it, giving you complete overhaul of the diplomacy so that it's more, uh, it's better and easier to understand, and all this new stuff. And I think that was one of the big things that improved the games for me and. You know, when my laptop can support it, I'll be playing that. Yay. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to seeing you record some... Uh, some some Rome... proper games. Yeah, some... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Rome 2, but yeah, proper games. <laughs> yeah, proper games. <laughs> yeah, Rome 2, I mean, I agree. It's it's improved. The only thing I don't like is the DLC, but we mentioned that last week. I'm not going to go into it again no, this week, no. but, but yeah. Um... Yeah, there are some good... Actually, on the best games of the year, um, I'd, have to, I'd have to add... Uh, the new Pokemon game that came out in November. Oh, uh, fuck! That was amazing. Omega and Ruby, Alpha Omega, Sapphire, and... Alpha Alpha Sapphire and Omega yeah. Ruby. Yeah, yeah. I I got Omega Ruby, and the amount of like Pokemon is one of those games where you have everyone who says Generation well, not everyone, but a vast majority say Generation One's the best. Blah blah blah. Uh, my housemate's Generation Two's the best because blah blah blah. But I'm just like every year 
they improve something. Every year they add things that you would like. It's a remake of Generation 3, yeah. which was already good, and they've added things to it. They've improved the story. I don't know even how that's even possible. Improved the story, added these new mechanics that haven't been in any of the previous games, and oh my god, the spectacle is amazing. In, in, on the 3DS, it looks awesome, and it feels awesome, and I am really looking forward in the future give us you know five years in the future um a remake of generation four because for me generation four was the best generation uh the story was basically a masterpiece level the storyline and i was so into it and i think that pokemon every year gets better and it's annoying for me it feels like pokemon's getting a bit like call of duty we bring a new one every year <laughs> pokemon is, with guns it, it's, it's a shame yeah. but the thing is they get better so it's not too much of a shame but I do think they need to slow down just a little bit, because otherwise they'll end up in Generation 10 before yeah. we know it. And it's just like, no, slow down a bit. Just, you know, a year every two, you know, a game every two years is fine. Not a year, not a game every year. Because you're going to overextend yourself. And, yeah. And, you know. I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> once you get the double figures, it does get a bit Yeah, I mean, we're ridiculous. on Generation 6 now. There are, uh, I think, 15, 16 games, and it, there are so many Pokemons. Every year they have to cut down the amount of pokemon so it doesn't get out of hand and it just feels like you know slow down we're okay with that you can instead of what well, instead of releasing a new pokemon game on like ds so a big pokemon game why don't you make one on wii u like a like a remake of stadium or a remake of coliseum you know one of those yeah. games for wii u for that year so it doesn't get repetitive but uh, yeah i when as soon as that game as soon as um omega ruby alpha sapphire was um um, announced. I bought myself a 3DS and got myself a Pokemon uh, X just to get myself into Generation Six and learn all the <laughs> stuff that was going on because I was so so psyched for that game. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was a really good. It, it exceeded my expectations so much. What's your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> if you had said Pokemon game, I could have answered that. Um, but Actual Pokemon. Pokemon. I don't know. I really like. I, re- <laughs> I really like my Tiena, which is a Generation Three Pokemon. Yeah, I, I know, yeah. Fucking awesome. Um, but I really like a lot of Pokemon. So, if I had to pick one, it'd have to be Espeon. Espeon. Ooh. Espeon. But I really, really like things like my Tiena, Luxray, and all those, all those dog-like Pokemon I adore. So. Uh, Growlithe. Yeah, yeah Rally of Arcanine. Arcanine, oh, yeah. There are so many good ones. But oh, yeah. I want to watch Pokemon now. <laughs> yeah, there's so many there's so many episodes. It's I like... want to be the very best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, no, um, yeah if, if if any of you are thinking about getting uh, Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire, you definitely should. It is so worth it. Like, I was, I d- I was kind of... I was hyped for the game. I really was. I got it on day of release. And... But I was wondering what they would add to the game, how they would make it better, because it's been it's been at least five years since uh, wait 2014 they did yeah 2012 or no 2011 was the remakes of Gen 2 so four years three years no that doesn't even sound right they kind of done that I confused. <laughs> 2010. No, it's been four years, yeah, since the last time they did a remake. And the old remake, they completely changed a lot of shit. Yeah. And in this time, they completely changed a lot of shit as well. And it was like, you guys have the best ideas out there, and it's so good. Yeah. It it really is. Yeah, I think Charizard's my favorite Pokemon. (laughs) Um, Charizard's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's not because my YouTube name's Dragonheart. I just... I don't know, I just... I find him, especially in the Pokemon anime series... He's quite a funny kind of Pokemon, the way, yeah. especially in the first series when the way he acts with Ash and yeah, yeah, it's, he's my favourite. Yeah, it's good. I always used to pick him in Pokemon Red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, a, I'm more of a Squirtle kind of guy. <laughs> that should be an internet meme. I'm more of a Squirtle kind of guy. Just, a, just a picture of a penis. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my god! Yeah. This is the point of the podcast. Podcast where things just start to get a bit freaky. Yeah. Last week it was poo. This week it's penis and squirtle talk. Anyway, so let's talk yeah. about gaming events, very. Right? Yeah. Um, Gamergate. Should we start with Gamergate? Yep. Sure. Do you want to introduce for those of people who have not heard about this? 
Yeah. Um, Do a quick. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't even know the full thing of it. It's it's just something that's just blown up out of out of proportion, yeah. probably. I think. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to think exactly what happened in case I get it wrong. Um, isn't it to do with that girl? That girl yeah. with the funny hair. She's got like blue hair or pink hair or something. Yeah. Basically, she slept with was it four guys? I think. She, oh, she's. I think it was four guys. She's basically she's a journalist. I think isn't she? She yeah. worked for no. Sorry, no. She worked for a gaming company. She slept with four guys. So well done you. Um, <laughs> lucky. <laughs> lucky you. Um, but she slept with journalists. They were all journalists. She slept with them to gain favour for the game that she was making. And yeah. they gave her positive previews and first impressions and all that kind of crap, basically. This got out into the media, and the media just had a shitstorm with it. And yeah. I think that, that... All gamers are like that. And... Oh, yeah. And, that, and it's been on BBC News. They actually interviewed her on BBC News. Um, it's on the YouTube, BBC, BBC News YouTube channel, so you can actually click on it and watch it. Um, yeah, it's, it's given gamers a bad bad kind of name it, yeah it's just completely i mean what, what do you think about it i mean i think it's... i think i think that the whole point i think there is one good thing that came out of all of this even though it's the whole thing is a punch firstly sleeping with people to get good reviews is wrong yeah <laughs> secondly not all gamers are like that exactly um it's a total bullshit and not all youtubers are like that and whatever and then a lot of people got into arguments. People like uh, Boogie2988 got oh, into yeah, a load yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, people like NerdCube got into a few of them. Uh, NerdCube and Yogscast had a massive like fight over the fact that they were giving reviews to people because the whole this whole sleeping with people to get positive stuff uh, was also uh, mirrored with um, companies paying YouTubers. Uh, to give them positive reviews, you know, paid promotions and all that, which Yogscast get a lot of. That's where they make most of their money, to be honest. Yeah. And the whole, there was a massive row between uh, Yogscast and NoCube concerning the the fact that Yogscast weren't telling their people, uh, the people watching, the viewers, that this was a paid promotion, which they've now had to do. It's now law in the UK, at least, that pe- uh, people doing certain people being paid to promote a game or any kind of product have to be explicit say it openly at the beginning of the video in the comment section in the description and also now even on the thumbnail it has to be said um, and explicit so everyone knows automatically that it's a paid promotion and i think that's one of the best things that came from it although i you know i think it should have been done before but i think one of the big issues that's i you know that's being shown here is that Governments need to take gaming as an economy way more seriously than they have previously. It's an industry that doesn't have a lot of regulations. It has regulations in terms of safety for children uh, with all the ratings and all that, but it doesn't have a lot in the term of safety and regulations in the form of making money from it. And that's something like esports and stuff that doesn't have quite a lot of regulations and I think needs to be regulated more by the governments and given some thoughts towards it because... Otherwise, things go way out of hand, as as we saw with Gamergate. Yeah, um, I think most people probably thought that, or at least from the Gamergate perspective, that most gamers out there they're fat, middle aged yeah. men, overweight, big massive neck beard. And I'm going to use Boogie as an example. I actually like Boogie. I'm subscribed yeah, to the channel. Yeah, I adore him as well. But they, yeah. you know, I think they kind of pictured him as a kind of average gamer. This is what the the face of the gaming community yeah. is. Where that's not the case. I mean, no, it's not. we come he, in all shapes and sizes yeah, and sexes. Yeah, they do. Uh, the, the, the gaming community is pretty much like you, a country in its own. Exactly, it's got yeah. a variety of everything. People from all over the world play. If you put them in one country, you basically end up with America anyway. Exactly. Because <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's a melting pot. Yeah. Anyone games. Girls, boys... Uh, old men, you know. Exactly, I know. And... Everyone games. It's not. It's yeah. not. It's not one of those things that is, you know, only young people game. <laughs> it's like no, everyone, everyone games. They're like, like, not obviously not everyone, but any kind of person. It's not black and white. It's multi. <laughs> it's multiracial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it, it is, and it's something that something that needs to be put out there. I think 
Uh, right now, a lot of the world is focusing on the on the problems between uh, homosexuality and, and sexuality as a whole. But soon it will have to change towards uh, this unity and this you know multicultural diversion in everything. Yeah. You know, not just the workspace, but uh, you know, in the hobbies and everything. And, exactly. Ugh. Yeah, it's uh, the world's fucking mental at the moment. Yeah, so. I mean, like I um. I was I, <laughs> at school. I did a presentation on how much I like Warhammer, and um, when <laughs> yeah. I showed them pictures of uh, the Warhammer, um, the Warhammer Games Day, which is like uh, Comic Con but for Warhammer, and there were women there. A lot of people were like, "Oh, the women play this game." So yeah. yeah, anyone can play this game. It's not like specifically tailored towards men. Oh. you know, it, it, you know, anyone can like this, and it, it's that kind of mentality that needs to needs to be changed, in my yeah. opinion. I agree. I mean, from a Total War perspective, and this is something I think we mentioned when we talked on Skype a few weeks yeah. ago, we don't actually see many female Total War YouTubers, do we? And that's something I'd love to see more of. Yeah, because, not because we're not like because the... Not because we're pervs <laughs> or because, you know, shit like that. Because I would like to see a fair Democrat. I'd like yeah. to see equality. I'd like to see people, you know, be encouraged to do that sort of thing. And not just, not just uh, female Total War players, but Older Total War players, maybe people who were yeah, fifty. Yeah, yeah. There was um, on that on that thing. There was uh, when back when I was doing my uh, Total War, was it Rome Total War online battle reviews, where basically my uh, subscribers would send me reviews and I would play them, record them, and then uh, tell the, as I was recording, I would commentate on what was going on and saying if this was a good move or a bad move. And there was one um, subscriber at the time who was in his. Uh, uh, late 40s early 50s yeah whose son watched my um my who was a subscriber and then he watched the videos and then he subsequently became a subscriber and sent me some and we actually got talking and things and he started his own youtube channel and i don't know he's stopped now he's probably got his own uh, you know adult related problems <laughs> yeah um yeah. but yeah i mean seeing someone who was of a much more mature age than the average total war player Playing the game, getting on YouTube for me that was amazing. You know, managing to inspire someone of that age group to to start gaming, you know, to start playing Total War because he was always interested in history, and that's how he got into Total War. And by seeing the YouTube and all that, he got into the um, the the whole you know commentating business and all that. And it was you know it was great. And um, also like on the subject of girls playing Total War, my ex girlfriend was actually into. She's way into history, into ancient history, so I got her into Rome Total War. And although she herself would be way, way too shy to to actually record, yeah. there are girls out there who do enjoy history. But I think the issue is that they're not... Um, I think they're not really shown the fact that historical games exist other than Call of Duty or yeah. things like that. That yeah, is like the extent of historical gaming. Yeah, first-person shooter, Call of Duty. When there are really good games out there like Total War, like Crusader Kings 2, uh, which have a massive historical outlook, but are still games and are still enjoyable. Yeah, I agree totally. You know, and that, that's at the end of the day what you just said. That's gaming and YouTube done correctly. Encouraging people, getting people involved, and that's what YouTube is all about. It's a big social network. And that's what we want it to be. And this whole yeah. Gamergate thing, I mean, that just shows the complete opposite. We, that's what we don't want in video no. games. And, yeah, they can, they can go fuck themselves for like, <laughs> <laughs> to put it as politely as I can. Um, mm-hmm. Going back just, just for a second with the Gamergate and paid, paid reviews. What are your opinions on paid reviews? I think paid reviews are... I think they're fine, as long as you say, this is a paid review, so obviously I'm going to be a bit... Yeah. Or... You know, oh yeah, this is actually really good because. But as long as you give the reasons for, like, it's like, oh yeah, the graphics are awesome. Yeah. Please don't say please that. <laughs> tell us why. You know, why, show yeah. us why. Don't just say yeah, graphics are good. Anyway, let's move on to the other. Guys. Like, what? No, show us. Give us evidence. <laughs> this. Okay, yeah. you're paid to to give a review of this, but you know, in the end, we're just going to you know see this and go. Well, not a lot of people are, but people with actual brains are going to go well this is a paid promotion so this is going to be very one sided towards that game I think there are people out there who try not to give uh, who give honest review people like Total War Biscuit yeah I love Total Biscuit yeah. give their honest opinion on a game and will give both sides of the argument why this is a good game why this is a bad game people like the Angry Joe show will give 
absolutely blatant, honest reviews, whether they enjoyed the game or they hated the game. Yeah. And they'll always give, you know, good and bad parts. Um, Angry Joe shows review of um, Alien Isolation was this year. That's a really, that's a game that came out that was fucking awesome from CAs, Alien Isolation, actually. Um, but yeah, his his review on that, he he told us the good points, and then he was like, right halfway through, he was like, oh yeah, and then halfway through the game, this all changes. And you're like, what? And it's like, yeah, this is all the shit parts of the game. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching his review, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, that's a really good, you know, that's the way a review should be. It should be unbiased, yeah. and just give you the hard facts, not and then at the end, maybe give you your opinion, you know, their own opinion on, you know, as long as they say these are the, this is what I think, and this is why, you know, back up your own thoughts. Exactly, yeah. That's totally fine. But if you just say, yeah, the graphics are good, gameplay is all right, uh, I think you should get this game. No, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Don't I, tell. as you know, I've been looking for a new headset, and I've actually watched a couple of headset reviews on YouTube recently. Yeah. One of the headsets I was looking at is the Astro A50. It's a very expensive headset. I just wanted to look to see uh, what it's like because I've heard good things about it. I came across this review. I think it's the most watched review of this particular headset on the search results, right? So I clicked on it, and the guy, um, he's, he's about our age, mid twenties, early to mid-20s, yeah. and he said at the start of his video, this is a paid review. I watched the review. It's about 10, 15 minutes long. I can't remember what it was exactly. And it was the most blatant, I suppose, you, I can, I'm going to call it bum sugar in. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, it does to me, yeah. Yeah. He completely sucked up to the Astro company. Yeah. Um, and he said, oh, I've, I've had Astro's product sent to me in the past. And he actually said this in the review. And he, yeah. he was really overhyped about everything. And he wasn't critical at all, which I thought, well... For hardware, it's bound to be something you can find yeah. this critical. I mean, I could, I could, tell, I could give you a review of that the headset I'm using. I could tell you that the quality is bloody amazing yeah. for what it is. I could tell you that uh, the headset itself is is okay. It's adjustable, which is nice. And I can tell you that it doesn't cost you know as much as high end ones. However, I could say that after a while of wearing it, it can feel as if it's pressing against your ears and get really like it could get really painful. Yeah. I'd still recommend this headset, even though you know after wearing it for a while, it can hurt a bit. Um, but just, you know, there we go. That's yeah. my there. That's my review of my headset. So get a turtle beach, guy. Yeah. <laughs> this is a paid yeah. podcast. <laughs> it's not a paid podcast. I don't yeah. give a shit. I like thy headset. If I recommend a certain headset to someone, that's because I like the headset I have. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. for, um, for Christmas, don't listen to this, my brother. Um, <laughs> I bought my brother a, a uh, not, not a turtle, not the same headset that I've got, but a turtle beach, um, which is of similar quality. Because they're so good. Because yeah. I really like them. I think you know he would enjoy it because I think they're really good quality. So there we go. That's what a review should be. There we go. A recommendation. A, a mini review in a podcast. <laughs> yeah. So guys, if you want a good headset, Total Beach is not that bad to be honest. There's probably better out there. I don't know that. I haven't researched it, but the one I've got, I'm happy with. So why should I change? Yeah, exactly. If it breaks, I might look around, but it it might have it will probably happen that I'll go back to Turtle Beach because they're really good quality. Yeah. I think that's what reviews should be. I think that's it's something that we've lost over the way, and paid promotions really have blurred that line of proper reviews. Yeah, because I don't know what to trust there anymore. Are at least, I think there are, at least there are some reviews like Angry Joe Show, like Tall Biscuit, who have a very big subscriber base, who are still honest. Yeah. I think that's really good. Yeah, because um, I remember with Total Biscuit, he released a video regarding Shadow of Mordor when that came out, and they had this policy, didn't they, Shadow of Mordor, where... If you're going to upload any kind of gameplay footage to YouTube, first of all, you have to get a signed contract from them, and you can't be discriminatory towards the game. You have to say good things about the game. Yeah. I, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, it's like um, last year, that was what Sega was doing. Oh, yeah, I know. And then we all had to um, apply to Creative Assembly for a, yeah. for a discussion thingy with Mob. That was so weird. Yeah, I got that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I all to all YouTubers had to do it. Yeah, I think I think I got to renew mine. Is there every? We year? have to review it. Do you have to renew it? I have to check my emails. Yeah, I think it's it's only for a year. You got to renew it every year. <laughs> I, I don't know. I should probably email them and find out. Well, uh, I don't know. Is it important? I mean, none of my uh, videos have been flagged. Well, you know, in the end, it, I think it's Sega Japan really doing that. Yeah, I have actually had a few Total War videos flagged. Really? Yeah, Empire, oh. sound soundtrack. Oh, that's probably for soundtrack. Though, yeah. Not. They they did say that they haven't really got much control on the Empire one. No, just yeah. kind of just kind of have to move the the 
the soundtrack. Yeah, and... the sound. I, I keep my sound usually on really low. And yeah. That usually does it because I usually talk over it anyway. And then the only issues I've ever had with flagging games was um, Civilization Five because there are when I do my multiplayer games I'm not constantly talking because it's a conversation. Sometimes there are gaps where there's no thing. Yeah. There's no one talking, so you hear the music. But the thing is, it usually flags it. In moments where there's no music, no one talking, it's just silence, <laughs> and you're like, why are you flagging silence? Oh, I know. Fucking weirdo. The whole uh, YouTube kind of flagging system is complete garbage. It, you just yeah. don't know what it's going to do. No, you don't. You don't know what video is going to be hit next. And it's, as a YouTuber... They'll lock your doors and windows, because <laughs> you... that flag's coming for you. <laughs> yeah. As a YouTuber, it's the worst thing, especially when you've, you've set some time aside. It's you've, so you've... long making yeah. a video, when it, it's, yeah, yeah, it's really annoying. Yes, it's bad. So yeah, we've we've talked about 2014, a year yeah. in gaming. We've mentioned some good games. We've mentioned some bad games. Are you ready to talk about Unity? Yep. Oh God. Let's talk about. <laughs> let's finish off on Unity. Viva la France! Um, I am. That is, that that is the one thing I cannot let Ubisoft get away with. Oh, here we go. Why would they fuck up the? Only game that they fucked up so bad, apart like three was still playable, it was still okay. Why on Unity, the one game set in fucking revolutionary France, <laughs> the best, one of the best places they could have fucking set a, a, a game in? Yeah. Why the fuck that one up? I mean, come on. I know. I mean, so, like the whole French Revolution era, that that whole place is such an amazing bit to have an Assassin's Creed thing. Yeah. They could have had an amazing story around that. They could have had a, the, the gameplay could have been amazing. All everything could have been so good, but they had to fuck it up. <laughs> they had to fuck it up. <laughs> I'm so pissed at that. Yeah, I mean, um, oh god, where am I going to begin? Okay, bugs. Games full of bugs. It's been patched four times, I believe. Oh yeah, I heard that as well. And yeah. it's, is it bugged more than it was on release now? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I think it is bugged. I actually played it. I tried it out yesterday. I played it for about half an hour, and yeah, it's still buggy. It's it's uh, it's horrible. Frame rate's terrible. I mean, I wasn't even a uh, live stream or anything. I just played it normally, and the frame rate was still bad. Um, characters have changed gender a couple of times for me. <laughs> uh, I didn't have the the famous kind of picture that's going around the internet where the eyes and the, the lips have popped out but there's no face there. I haven't, <laughs> actually, I haven't actually had that, although I have had a couple of questionable kind of glitches with the faces, yeah. but, but nothing that severe. Um, voice acting? Okay, voice acting wasn't too bad, okay, I'll, I'll say that. But they didn't have any French accents, at least have a French accent. I mean, I know yeah. I know it's English speaking for English. Yeah, no, yeah, but that, that's that's totally fair. Yeah, but the the when um when we had the Ezio trilogy, they all spoke with Italian accents. Yeah, they did it. It's like it's like um how can you speak French? I met a couple of French girls in Firenze. He had an accent, and that was great. Yeah. And it just fucking ruined it. I mean, you know, it, oh god. Okay, Arno. Okay, we'll talk about Arno for a minute. He becomes an assassin in five minutes, <laughs> literally. I yeah. Mean, uh, he he basically becomes an assassin because he's told to. Yeah, in there we go. In it's Black Flag, I moaned I moaned my girlfriend about Black Flag when Edward became an assassin because he started off as a pirate, yeah. and then he literally stole um, the guy's yeah, yeah. yeah he, he stole his uniform, took his letter to the the Spanish dude, and then he ended up kind of getting involved in the plot, and eventually someone's like, oh yeah, he has the scent, and then he so, starts to become an assassin. And that's, I think that's like the end of Act 2 or something, isn't it, in the game. In this game, you literally start off, your father gets killed. All of a sudden, you're a little bit older, you're about 19, 20, something like that. And you're chasing away, running away from those two fat guys that are chasing you after your, after your watch. You end up getting arrested not long after, and then the revolution kind of starts. And you're an assassin all of a sudden. You, you literally speak to that guy in the prison cell, and he's like... He's like, um, oh, I'll train you, and then boom. Be an assassin, okay. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you meet in the the grand assassin order, and it's yeah, like, it's master. like, are you ready to follow the eagle's path? And it's like, eagle's path, fucking hell, we just start the game. There's no, no. <laughs> See, that's the thing is, I think that they just fucked up most of the things in that game. Everything's fucked up except yeah. like where it was set. Because the story was terrible. I mean, even Assassin's Creed Three, like the start with Hatham Kenway, was so good. Oh, it was. I yeah. Hatham Kenway's like beginning, and then when you're like, oh my god, he's a Templar. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> was not expecting that, and then it's just like, 
Jesus Christ, mind blown. And then the story got shit. But because <laughs> Connor's character was pretty shit. Yeah. But ne- here, it's from fucking start to fucking finish. It's a shit game. Yeah, it's uh, it's terrible. It's such a shame. Yeah, I'm. I have. I have nightmares about this game. <laughs> <laughs> and and the thing is, like, they released this buggy game, and okay, I'm gonna be kind of Ubisoft. They've come out and they've said, right, the, the DLC they had planned to be released for this game is actually going to be free. As a as a yes, way of an apology, which which is good, that's good because you don't you don't see that too often. I mean, even even Room Two didn't do that. No, fuck you, Creative Assembly. No, <laughs> We've joking. already said our things about it last episode. Yeah, I'm not going to go into that. Um, but they've already announced, or it's been leaked. They say it's been leaked, but it's fucking be announced really that there's going to be a new Assassin's Creed game next year, and it's going to be set in Victorian Britain, and there's actually yeah, screenshots of it on yeah. online. Yeah. Already, the game barely came out and yeah. already that's Oh, we released the buggy mess. Fuck. Uh, quick, announce the next one. Yeah. <laughs> that never happened. Call okay. of du- Call of Duty syndrome. Call of Duty syndrome. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. I think Ubisoft. Had... Something happened. Something happened in Ubisoft this year or last year, which just totally fucked everything up. Yeah. And we don't know what it is. No. Find out. <laughs> the next year, Dragonheart <laughs> and Rex will go on an investigation to the Ubisoft studio. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll dress up as assassins. <laughs> <laughs> dress up as sh- modern day Victorian, assassins. Victorian assassins, Sherlock and Watson. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <sighs> That'd be yeah. cool. That would be cool. I have to buy a hidden blade off eBay for £30. <laughs> just <pick> one. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. No, but yeah, I just feel like Assassin's Creed Unity should have been such a good game. Yeah. And it just. I mean, it just wasn't... It's just like Watch Dogs. They started the year with Watch Dogs. That fucked everything up with all the hype. They ended the year with Assassin's Creed Unity, which fucked up everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... Will they ever come back? Find out next year when they release fucking Assassin's Creed Victoria. Yeah. And the thing is, like, it's got a massive following. It's a very unique it game. It is it's a got a great game. story over all the games. You know, the whole modern day yeah. plot with Desmond and... And well, not so much the newer games with the modern uh, day, but no, yeah. but it was good with Desmond. I was actually intrigued going through Revelations and going through Assassin's Creed Three, find out what was happening to him. Yeah. The whole Lucy plot that was great as yeah. well. That was amazing. Subject the sixteen. Whole, the whole Assassin's Creed from one to um, to Revelations, and even to its extent to three, was yeah. the the whole arc. Like not not just the story in each individual game, but the arc from one to three was so good. Yeah. Like it was like you wanted to buy the next game not because it was the next Assassin's Creed, but not only because of it was the next Assassin's Creed, but because you want to know what happened next in the overall story. Yeah, exactly. And it was yeah. it was so good, and they because it ended. That's the thing. Because it ended, maybe that's why it's gone a bit haywire. Maybe because in three, even though a lot of people don't like three. The modern day was pretty good, I thought. It actually had a, a very good kind of suspense building ending yeah, with the whole yeah. Juno thing. You actually got to fight with Desmond finally. Yeah. You know, in the uh, Abstergo uh, la- yeah. In labs. Yeah, labs it yeah. was. Wasn't it? Um, and that was great. It actually built up to something. And then Black Flag came along and just, you're in first person view, you're a bland assassin or modern day person, where the fuck you're supposed yeah. to be. And you don't even know what your name is, you don't even know what you look like, and there's just no kind of personality there. And Ubisoft yeah. claim you're you're the assassin now. It's your choices. Like, oh my god, just round up <laughs> ideas. Shut up, Ubisoft. Yeah. <laughs> Hire a new uh, story man. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I just think Unity should have been so much better than it was. It should have been. And it wasn't, and it's a shame. Yeah. It's a big shame. I'm hoping next year is going to be good. Next year, I think this year was shit overall. To be honest, not just in the gaming industry. But a lot of things. I think the only thing that was good this year was mostly the cinema. I think even, but even then, there was some pretty shit films came out. Yeah, have you seen The Hobbit? Finally, I have not. No. Ah oh, man, <laughs> we're gonna have to save that for another podcast. Yeah, well, in two weeks, I'll be seeing it next week. So. Oh yeah. Okay. When I'm awesome. Back in, back in my home. Something for us to look forward to. Yeah, Hobbit discussions. <laughs> Yay. Right, so I think we're probably near the yep, end of I this think, podcast. I think that that should be it. So yeah. Yeah. Any any final thoughts? Uh, apart from thanking everyone for listening and to remind them to put in the comment section below any comments on what we talked about, as well as whether for next week whether modding is a help or a hindrance to uh, the gaming industry. No, that's it. Yay. Okay. So uh, next time we will be talking about modding, I believe. Yep. Yep. So we've got that to look forward to. 
And I'd just like to echo what Lord Rexor just said. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your feedback. It'd be fantastic if you could drop a comment in the comment section of either of our channels or the videos within the playlist just to let us know what you think of the podcast and what discussions you'd like us to talk about in the next episode. I've been Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and he has been... I've been Rexasaur. Woohoo! Mm. Thank you for watching, guys. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>